Yes, that's why John Lennon is dead. The first thing a baby does when it comes out of the womb is cry and protest. There's negative elements of it, i.e. Trump. But even that was kind of fun for a while. Hi, I'm Sinead O'Connor. I'm here at Penguin to answer some big questions. Hmm. I think it depends on your, your makeup. It depends what kind of person you are, you know? It depends what your ambitions were, or what it was that you were ambitious for. It can be a curse or a blessing, or both, you know? Depends. It's a blessing when you're at the airport and you want to skip the queue. It's a curse when you can't go in the pub because everybody wants to sing nothing compares to you. <laughs> you know? Yes, that's why John Lennon is dead. Nobody in the music business believes that Mark Chapman on a, alone was responsible for the death of John Lennon. And you notice that from the day that John Lennon dies, music becomes fake for 10 years. There's synthesizers, keyboards, fake instruments, songs about nothing but love. Everything becomes about how you look, the mad hairdos and the mad clothes and the whole distraction from the actual, you know, music moving you or changing you, you know. Even the artists who were quite politicised before John Lennon died, once John died, they came out of their rooms a bit more frightened and tended less to write songs that might be challenging to the establishment, you know. The last time that I would have thought music changed society was with the birth of rap. Uh, when NWA came along, they were like the Beatles in many ways. They changed the whole universe. Suddenly all the white kids were screaming, F*** the police, you know? And that was very dangerous. The music industry is in fact afraid of music and the power that music has to change the world. So the industry worked very hard to silence rap and to mimic it with artists that were saying nothing like Vanilla Ice, MC Hammer, all of these people, and then to demonise people like Public Enemy or NWA, you know. Eminem as well was a very important character. You know, he expressed a lot of the anger that, that mm, sort of disenfranchised, for want of a better word, white kids were feeling, you know. He definitely changed the world a bit, yeah. I, I don't like the word God. I think it's off-putting. It's, it's become an off-putting word. But I definitely think there is a, a, a presence which responds to the human voice, you know. I don't think it cares if you call it Fred or Daisy, you know. But yeah, there's something out there, definitely. Yes, absolutely. Well, in Ireland, obviously, it's manifested itself as, as a result of the clerical sexual abuse scandals, you know. I think there's about two or three guys turning up to be priests every year, you know. You don't really have a whole lot of people wanting to join the, the band, as it were, you know. I, it's human nature, whether anybody, you know, gives you the right or not is beside the point. It's not a right that anybody can give you. You're born with it, you know. The first thing a baby does when it comes out of the womb is cry and protest. You know, it's cold <laughs> or it's whatever, frightened or that's the way wh whoever made us, made us, you know. So it's, it's the same as breathing, you know. I think there are some that don't get talked about that should, like Van Morrison, for example, because his, the height of his career was in the 70s, really. People don't uh, often talk about him when they talk about, you know, really important Irish musicians. And he's probably the most important Irish musician of all of them, you know. I don't think he's underrated. I just think that people forget to include him when they're talking about, you know, great musicians. They only go back as far as the 80s, you know. Um, perhaps because Van lived in America for a long time, but so it's not so much that he's underrated, but he doesn't get included. You know. Is talent inherited or learned? Hmm, I'd say both, both really. I think it's learned and genetic and environmental. You know, right. what's going on in your sitting room, what's going on in your country. You know, what other music you're listening to you know, or what other art you're exposing yourself to, so a bit of everything, really. Well, I always say there's a reason that God didn't just make one of us. You know, we're supposed to communicate with each other and be there for each other and help each other. And it's brilliant that, you, you know, you can talk to somebody in Guatemala when you're sitting in Limerick, do you know what I mean? Or you can play cards with somebody in Guatemala when you're sitting in Limerick, do you know? Or 
also obviously you have the whole rising that happened in Egypt. You have a whole a lot of the whole protest thing that you know, and a lot of just really nice fun stuff. You know all the mad pop up stuff that happens all over the world, and you know. So yeah, it's like anything else. You get your your there's negative elements of it, i.e. Trump, you know. But even that was kind of fun for a while. But I think it's brilliant that um, it's it's a, a salve, not a cure, but a salve for loneliness. You know. I think that's what's good about it. Thanks for watching. You can get my memoir, Rememberings, by clicking on the link below. Don't forget to subscribe to Penguin for more videos like this.